Because one night in my life, I was out on, in sin's dark sea. But there was a light that shined through the darkness. And it was that lighthouse. It was Jesus Christ. I'm so thankful for the time in my life. It's kind of funny that we've seen this song, the church that I got saved in, and was called Lighthouse Pentecostal Holiness Church. And there was a lighthouse one day in my life where Jesus was standing there, and he was saying, I wish come this way. There's an easier way, and there's the, the sea is not as rough. Sometimes in life, sea, it gets rough, and we're experiencing it right now, church. And I'm so thankful that when you get into his realm, there's calm seas. I love the Lord tonight. Y'all pray for us as we try to sing this song. I pray that my throat will hold up. <laughs> There's a lighthouse on a hillside that overlooks life's sea. When I'm tossed, oh, it sins out loud. Light that I might see, and the light that shines in darkness now will safely lead me on. If it wasn't for the lighthouse, my ship would sail. He 
said, sir, would you lend me some spare change? I haven't eaten since I don't know when. The first thought in my mind was almost to get high. So I spoke up and said, I'm sorry, my friend. And as I turned to walk away, I felt God's Spirit say, you were once lost just like him. Oh, but look where he brought us from and where we would be if not for the blood he shed on that old rugged tree. Oh, remind us back when we were lost out in sin. All our chains free And all oh, remind us When we see a sinner in need We haven't always been saved And as I turn back around I can see the man frown So I slowly approached him again I said, sir could I tell you a story of how you'll never go hungry again? He just looked up and smiled and was spoke for a while as I told him all Jesus had done. And right there in that place, through mercy and grace by faith, Another sinner was one. Oh, but look where he brought us from and where we would be if not for the blood he shed on that old rugged tree. And oh, remind us back when we were lost out in sin. Broke all our chains free, and oh, remind us when we see a sinner in need, we haven't always been saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anybody else tonight? Something on your heart, or anything? Praise the Lord. I won't be before you very long tonight. Just a super quick thought. This is probably one of the most preached scriptures in the Word of God. I'm not going to say I hadn't never really preached from it, but I don't remember. But you know how my mind is. That don't mean nothing. But I'm going to hit it tonight. If you'll turn in your Bibles to John 3.16. When you find that, if you'd stand for the reading of the word. Boy, it sure felt good to ask Levi to lead in prayer tonight, did it not? Amen. Amen. Thank God for his saving grace and his mercy. Amen. That's why we're all here tonight. If you're saved, it's God's saving grace and God's mercy. Amen. Amen. You find your place, say amen. amen. All right. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now, there's a lot of versions leave out some of this, but... I'm glad the version I got tonight that calls it his only begotten son. That means that is his son from him, that is his beloved son, that is the one and only son, amen. He is in the Trinity, that's who he was, that's who he was, amen. And I don't believe, I believe you go to leaving stuff out of the word of God, you're going to get in some big trouble. Ever in, if I'm going, let me run a rabbit here, I don't go, I ain't even got, hey, for first. Uh, amen, here I'm going. The book of Revelation tells us over in that book, and I don't think God uh, puts any more emphasis on that book than any other book, but it says if any man add to or take away from this book, he said all of these plagues will be added unto you, amen. Uh, if somebody, if I'm sitting here talking about my youngins who I love with all my heart and I write something about them, Avery, and you come in there and you start taking out some adjectives and you start taking out 
some narratives about my young and I'm going to be upset with you. I say, that's, that's my beloved young and I don't want you to go in there and just say, hey, that's my young and amen. But it was his only uh, begotten son. And he said that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. You can be seated. I want to preach for just a very short minute right here on the love of God. On the love of God. And uh, the world, <clears throat> you heard me say the other night, I about got started on this. The world is looking for something. Uh, the suicide rate is up in alarming numbers. Uh, drug use is up in alarming numbers. Alcohol abuse is up in alarming numbers. Uh, people having affairs uh, in their marriage is up in alarming numbers. Uh, people having premarital sex uh, is up in al alarming numbers. Oh, you say pre that's pretty plain. You ought not say stuff like that out of the pulpit. Hey, that's what's wrong with our churches now in the world now. If people don't want to call it out. But that's what's wrong with us. Uh, we are living in sin and doing things that we ought not do. And people don't want to call it out. But Jesus Christ sent his son into this world uh, to show us uh, what love is. Amen. And without him, we wouldn't even know what love is. The Bible said God is love. Amen. Amen. And we see that Jesus Christ, uh, he first uh, loved me and you. But the world is looking for something. Uh, you can take the meanest, uh, wretchedest person in the world, Tanner, and they can tell you that they don't care if nobody loves them. Uh, they can tell you they don't care if nobody likes them. Uh, but Stephen, they're lying to you. Everybody in the world wants to be loved. Uh, they want to be uh, felt uh, res uh, a respect for. And they want to feel a, a friendship. And a lot of people who don't don't, uh, they turn violent and they turn mean even onto their self. Uh, so, but you know what? A lot of them's looking for all this stuff in all the wrong places uh, when they can find exactly what they're looking for is their Lord and Maker and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can fill that hole. Uh, you can't have enough affairs uh, to fill that hole. You can't drink enough alcohol uh, to fill that hole. Uh, you can't take enough drugs uh, to fill that hole. Uh, you can't buy enough enough goods of this world uh, to fill that hole. There's only one thing uh, that'll fill that void in your life and that absence of love and that's knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and your King and King and He'll fill a place in your heart that nothing else in this world can. Amen. I've been lucky. Uh, one of my friends, I won't call his name, uh, but he's told me, he said, uh, he's my age. He said, I know that my mom and dad love me. Uh, he said, but uh, he said, they never told me uh, one time, even as a little child. He said, they never put me in the bed and said, good night, son, I love you. He said, they never said, uh, oh, Christmas, well, Merry Christmas, son, I love you. He said, not one time in my whole childhood uh, did I hear somebody tell me uh, that they love me. Man, that's a sad childhood uh, to me, amen, and, and I can see it in his life, I can see that that affects people, I used to be kind of hard, David, and still sometimes I am, but people would come up with a sad story, because how their life was, and they'd say, well I was abused as a child, or, or I, I wasn't showed love as a child and I'd be like, oh, that's just a crutch, uh, uh, that's just a crutch you a, you a grown man, you can do what you want, but boy, I look back since I've been in the ministry a while, and counsel folks, and I was dead wrong so anybody that I've ever said that to, I apologize to you uh, because it has a huge effect on your life. If you're not shown love, amen, uh, then you don't know how to show love except for Jesus show you uh, how to do that, amen. He said to pray for those uh, that despitefully use you. Now, is that natural? Is that normal? No, it's not. It's our, it's our flesh. Uh, we want to lash out. Uh, I've had to deal with that this week, amen. Help me, God, and forgive me, Lord, for some things thoughts and things that I've had on my mind. Uh, somebody says something to you or somebody kind of does your family dirty. Uh, that old flesh wants to rise up in me. But you know what my Bible says? Uh, the Bible I begin to get in the Word and the Word of God rebuked me. Amen. It rebuked my words. It rebuked my feelings. And God said, no, that ain't how you do it. It's easy to love somebody that's a loving on you. Amen. It's easy to give uh, when somebody's a giving to you. But you see, that ain't to love. 
love that God showed us, amen. Uh, when you go out on a date and you see some girl or boy that's uh, beautiful, oh, you think you can't live without them, and you get to go on a few dates and, and they're good to you and, and you're good to them and you kind of like each other at first and, and then a few months down the road, uh, somebody gets the courage up to say, I love you. And man, you're just scared to death. They ain't going to say it back to you, amen. And, and then you fall in love with one another and because this one loves you, uh, you love her and you get to each other. That ain't the way it worked with God, amen. Uh, he loved us while we were yet sinners, the Bible says. Uh, when we was unlovable, uh, Christ loved us. And it's easy for us to love somebody, a uh, Scott that loves us. And it's, it's easy for me to love Scott Padgett, amen. Because Scott Padgett is as good to me as anybody I know. Uh, he's easy for me to love. But you know those ones that despitefully use me. Uh, let me just slow down. If I'm good back to Scott, I know Scott appreciates that. But you think God looks down on me, Andrew, and patting me on the head and telling me, good boy? No, he's not, because that's easy for me to do. Oh, but when the world despitefully uses you, amen, and you get off in your prayer place, and you get down and you begin to pray for him, God help me, God forgive me, and you get down in your prayer place, and you begin to pray for him, that's when God will look down and say, hey, that's my servant and who I'm well pleased, amen. God loved us when we didn't love Him. How many people have you loved in your life that didn't love you? I'm lucky, amen. My mom and dad told me they loved me 17 times a day. I'd have to go in there and wash my face or my mama kiss all over me as a little old boy. Uh, they showed me exactly what love. I raised up in a house where my mom and dad didn't fuss and fight. I mean, if I was about to argue a little bit over who is going to go out to eat, me and my sister was in a panic. I thought, God, they're going to get divorced. I thought that was a big old deal of them just having a dispute, amen. I grew up in a good house like that, but you know what? By me seeing that love, Brother Allen, I know how to love. Amen. I'm a loving kind of person. Hey, I told Steve another day, I said, I'm glad some of these men don't get aggravated. I'll just pay it on Avery's wife, and I'll just pay it on Andrew's wife. I'll pay it on Stephen's wife. I'll grab these. I had Avery up a while ago, a slobbering and a kissing on her neck. I just love these little old young. I'm a loving person. You know why? Because that love was shown to me. But you know, there's some people that don't know how that feels. By God, I can't imagine uh, how bad that would hurt uh, to love somebody with all your heart. Oh, Avery, if you love somebody with all your heart and you went home tonight and your little wife said, Avery, I don't love you. I've never loved you. I've put a front on. It would absolutely uh, break your heart and drive you insane. That's the way Jesus Christ feels. He sent His only begotten Son uh, to die on Calvary uh, for sinners. He loved us that much and yet we reject the love of God. Amen. I don't know what that feels like, but Jesus knows how that feels like. You say, oh, he's God. He might be God, but he's man. He walked this earth just like us. He was tempted in all points as all men, but yet he sinned not. He was tempted by the devil uh, for 40 days. Amen. The devil took him up on, on the mountain and said, cast yourself down. He said, don't you know you don't tempt uh, the Lord thy God. He went through some things just like we did. Amen. And he loved this world and they rejected him. Uh, they hated him. So when we feel that way, like the world hates us uh, for being Christians, he said, hey, they hated me before they hated you. Amen. Thank God for the love of Christ. Amen. My Bible tells me that no greater love than a man lay down his life for his friend. I'm glad I'm a friend to God tonight. Amen. If you're saved tonight, uh, you're a friend to God. Uh, no, you say, hey, well, I, I worship my youngins. I do. I kill a man over my youngins in a hot minute. You do something to one of my babies and you hurt one of my youngins, Angie, I will absolutely blow your brains out. I will go home and lay my head down. I will not ask God to forgive me. I won't repent over it. You harm one of my youngins. Uh, that's what God expects me to do, uh, to take Take care of my family and protect them. Amen. But as much as I love them, uh, there's a God in heaven uh, that loves them more than I do. I can't even comprehend that, Scott, because I, if they're out late, uh, Riley's 16 years old, uh, she'll want to go somewhere. Don't give me a lick of trouble. And Kim said, sometimes uh, you're a little bit too hard and you're a little bit too strict. Uh, you know why, brother? Because I love her with all my heart. And when I get ready to go to bed, if she's not in my house and under my roof, 
I can't lay down and go to sleep and it's hard for me to fathom that there's a God in heaven uh, that loves her even more than I did. Uh, he said no greater love than a man lay down his life for his friend. Amen. Thank God for the love of Jesus Christ tonight. Thank God it made a difference in my life. Sometimes I got to see again, Scott, and go back and look and see how wretched I am, even though I'm saved, and see how uncompassionate that I am sometimes. God, give me more compassion. Uh, God, give me more love. Uh, God, take more of my temper away. God, take more of myself away. Uh, God, let me decrease uh, so that you can increase. Amen. How are we going to win the world if we don't love them? Amen. But you know what I want to do when they hurt me? I want to strike out and hurt them back. That ain't of God. You know what that's of? That's a, no, let's just be honest. That's of the devil. If it ain't of God, it's of the devil, ain't it? Well, we ain't going to say that. It sounds better to say sin, didn't it, brother? But that's just of the devil. Sometimes we get the devil in us, don't we? I don't mean down in our heart where Jesus lived, but sometimes we'll get the devil and he's sitting up on our shoulder and he's talking into our ear when we are to say, get off our Satan, get behind me. But sometimes we'll let him sit right there and we'll walk down the road and talk to him, Lois. Yeah, you're right, devil. I know you're the devil, but that's pretty good advice. Yeah, devil, that's what I ought to do. I, I, I could still act like I'm a Christian and still be despiteful and still do this. Oh, no, you can't. I mean, you can, but God's going to whip you for it. Amen. Christ loved you and me while we were yet sinners. My God, it's time we start showing the world that we love them. Like I was telling the other day, I was talking to Lisa and some of them was talking. And I know the Bible says to do this at a time. To pray heaps of coal upon their head. Sometimes I'll just say, God, just go love them to death. Because yeah. Yeah. I'll think that they need this. Or I'll think they're out because of this. Right. When they might be out because of something way else. Right. They don't need no chastisement. Right. They don't need condemnation. They need love. Amen. They need compassion. That's what Christ showed us. He said, I come not into the world to condemn the world, but to what? Save them that which was lost. Thank God for the love of Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm glad that there's a lot of things. When my, I was talking about Riley and my wife, we went to Colorado. We're all a bunch of big puddings, ain't we? Amen. Might as well just be honest. I missed my wife and my family. I mean, the hunting wasn't no good. The snow was deep, but I was homesick by day four. I was. You know why? Because I love my wife. I love my girls. I thought I loved deer hunting, but I just kind of like it, Jimmy. But I love my family. If I could take my wife and my family with me, I'd hunt every day. But it don't work like that. But you know why? Because they love me too. And man, it's, it's harmonious at my house. It ain't perfect. But man, it's good. I, it's good to be home. I have a good relationship. My life and my marriage and my home... It might not be fancy, but it's almost fairy tale sometimes. God has blessed me. I thank God for that. Everybody don't have that. A lot of people's house is a fuss and a fight. You know why? Because you say, oh, it's because they don't love each other. No, maybe not. It's because they don't love God more than they do one another. You know what I had to learn? I'm just going to sit down and preach because this will help somebody. Me and Kim first got married. We come to church. She wasn't saved then. She got saved. We was young. We was young parents. Young newlyweds. I was hot tempered as Philip Ogle. That's bad. It's bad, ain't it, Dale? <laughs> we met a guy that day. He said, boy, I love your daddy. He's a good man. He said, except for when he gets mad. He said, I don't want to be around Phil when he gets mad. I used to be the same way. Me and my wife... Little old bitty fuss. What nothing, Stephen. But you know what? I wasn't going to back down an inch. I'm a man of the house, and I was going to have a last word. Well, you know what? At first, she'd cow down to that. Felt pretty good. Well, she got sick of my overbearing mess, and she got what she'd take up for herself. 
Then that caused the fuss. Then she realized she wasn't going back down, and I wasn't going back down. It caused fusses and arguments and strife. Just sitting there butting heads. It wasn't that I didn't love her. It wasn't that she didn't love me. Somebody needs to hear this tonight. You don't have to be right. God, if I could go back, brother, on some of them fusses and fights we had 15 years ago. It don't even matter. We've had fight. I'll tell on myself. Y'all know how I am. We was having a big old fight one night. Y'all get a kick out of this. I don't care. Y'all, I'm just, my life's an open book. If it helps you, then God, God use it. But we ain't got to be right and we ain't got to be prideful. We're fussing about something. I, I always me. I'm going to say what I want to say. And I'm headed to my truck and I'm leaving. I ain't going to sit there hear nothing. I went stomping out the door. That's been 20 years ago, y'all. So don't hold this on against me. <laughs> I heard Kim slam the door. And I heard a deadbolt lock. I was thinking, lock it, woman. I don't care. I ain't coming back. Don't want to come back. I'm right and you wrong. Got out from my truck. I mean, I didn't have my keys. <laughs> no way, dude. You don't know me. You know me now, but you don't know me then. I thought I'll die for I'll knock on that door. Thank God one of the kids wasn't behind it. I come to the front door. Son, I kicked her clean off the hinges. Poof. Went there. I'm dead serious. I mean, mold and flying, door flying. Thank God there wasn't no kids behind it. Walked in there and got my keys and left. You know why that happened? There wasn't no love of God in me. Come on now. I still love my wife, but I was going to be right and I was going to be it. It's all about me. Yeah. Come back home about three or four hours later, I'd calm down. And I thought, well, I was ready for round two. <laughs> Walked up there. Kim had the door tied up with a rope. I lost it, dying laughing. That fixed our whole fight that day. I was like, woman, you crazy. She's like, you crazy? You kicked the door off the hinges. Could have killed somebody, you big dummy. I said, shut up and get in the truck. Let's go to Lowe's and buy a new door. <laughs> but you know what? I said all that to say that. I, I, I remember that, but I'll guarantee you, she can't tell you what was fussing over, can you? And I don't know what was fussing over. Didn't even matter. But at the time, I just wanted to be right. I wasn't showing no love, and I wasn't showing no compassion. And I began to pray. Now, I'd heard the preachers preach, Uncle Richard, and I, I knowed what to pray for. And I'd go up out of the altar, look, trying to look good in front of God. Y'all know how we talk about psyching him out sometimes. I, I psyching God out. I'd be, I'd be dead serious, Brenda Ray, when I was praying, God, I need some work. Lord, send some work my way, God. I need work, work getting low. And then I'd be like, and Lord, help me to be a better husband. Help me to be a better dad. Lord, take my temper away. And God, help me to be, uh, have more patience. Amen. God ain't hearing that garbage. He ain't hearing it. About the time when I got through with that, God, if God probably just turned around walking off somewhere. But when I got sick of that, and I wanted more God in me and less of Heath in me, when I begin to get into my closet and I begin to pray, when I, be, when I go, I wasn't worried about the work. I wasn't worried about the groceries. I just like, God, please fix me. I'm broke. God, I'm broken. Lord, I want to be more like you. God, I want to have that love. God, when I would do things like that, I would hate myself for it after the fact. But my temper would overtake me. And I said, God, I want to be. And when I begin to pray and agonize with God about taking that away, he took it away. I thank him for that tonight. Am I perfect? Do I still get aggravated? I do, but my temper is from a hundred down to about a ten now. You know why? It's the love of God. Love covers a multitude of sins. But you can't love yourself more than you love God. Amen. You can't love your family more than you love God. And when you love God more than you love yourself, then you'll see a change in your life. 
It's unreal. There's nothing that surpasses the love of Jesus. I said, like I said, I'm about to close right now. I got a fear of losing my family. Always have. It crushed me. But you know what? We don't ever have to fear losing the love of God. The Bible says, I won't go through the whole list, but the Bible says nothing can separate us from the love of God. Now, ourself in this flesh, you go home and get a kick in your door off of hinges. And you're going to hurt the relationship with you and God. Amen? It's going to hurt that fellowship with you and God. But even in those times, God loved me. If he didn't, he wouldn't have pricked my heart. But I'm standing here tonight. I am what I am, which ain't much. But it's by and through the love of Jesus Christ. He said he loved us first before we ever loved him. I'm glad he decided to love me one day, ain't you? Ain't you glad that Jesus loves you? Amen. There ain't nothing better than feeling loved. Man, when I was, when, when the girls was little, had to work out of town a lot back in. I hated it. Got to take the girls traveling. And I couldn't wait to get home. I mean, I mean, I'd drive to work 55 mile an hour and drive home 108. They took my license five or six times while I was on the road traveling. I couldn't keep a license. I'd want to see my young. And Madison was just a little old bitty thing. And I couldn't wait to get home because it was the same routine, everything. If it wasn't raining, she heard daddy's truck pull up. I mean, she's just tiny. She'd be up there hopping on one leg in a circle, just dancing. She'd do that every time. And then I'd get out of the truck. She'd be like, daddy, get down. And I'd get down on my knees and she'd run and just jump in my arms. Man, I'd just hug her up. The best feeling in the world. But see, I know too what it's like when I'm feeling down and out. Sister, when I feel like God ain't nowhere around, I feel like I'm just as low as I can be. And all of a sudden, God will come over there to me. And he'll just grab me and just hug me. Yep. Yep. Tell me he loves me. Yep. I ain't never going to leave you. Right. I ain't going to forsake you. Right. I'm going to go with you all the way, even to the end. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. God just come by and you just feel the Holy Ghost just hug you up. That's one of them things to all taste and see. I can't explain it to you. But if you ever experience it one time for yourself, you'll never forget it. There's nothing like the love of Jesus. I'm glad that he first loved me. I've said it and I'll say it in closing. I didn't love Jesus to start with because I just thought he was a good fellow. I loved him. And got saved because I didn't want to die and go to hell. But boy, after I realized, David, what Jesus did for me. And I began to love him. And then his benefit package come along with that. And boy, then you begin to praise him. Then you begin to worship him. And man, I, and every day, the older I get, the stronger I get in the Lord, the more I need him. The more I crave him. Amen. I got to have him. Like the deer panteth for the water in the brook. My soul panteth for the Lord. I love him tonight. I ain't ashamed of him. Y'all pray for me that I'd ever do what God's will is. I'm just flesh, man. I get tore up sometimes. I get out of the, I get out of the road sometimes. God's got to pull me back in. But like I said, but the Bible said, I leave, Jesus said, I'll leave this commandment with you. That you love one another. The Bible said, you know, you've passed from death unto life because you love the brother. Amen. He said, if you, hey, if you can't love your brother who you see, he said, how can you love me who you've not seen? I love him tonight. And one of these days, it's my faith. I'm going to see him for myself. Amen. Paul got to see him on this earth. John got to see him. A couple others got to see him. He come by and seen Jacob. He come by and seen Abraham. He walked with them in the garden. I've read about it. I've tried to imagine what God's looks like. But one of these days, I'm going to see him for myself. Amen. You know why? Because he loved me. All right. Anybody got anything else tonight? I appreciate you.